now we would shift on to the case discussions and again i would like dr fadke to join us here i think dr gol will sir sir i just hope i have probably tried to cover the cases um, but at times maybe an investigation may be here and there so you can just enlighten us on that this is a case where there was hypercalcemia the calcium levels levels were on a higher side the phosphate levels were on the lower side creatinine and vitamin creatinine and vitamin d were in normal range um, any guess on the possibility it wasn't done in this patient the case was diagnosed as hypercalcemia to start with so and any suggestions on what it probably could be <laughs> right but but hypercalcemia is just the beginning so we have to then go ahead with it creatinine is normal right hyper parathyroidism uh we also thought in the same yes yes sir this question what is the cost for doing a pth test just offhand it's 800 rupees about 800 rupees yeah. you know a friend of mine uday whatever number of cases he has sent for parathyroid scan have always been positive and i asked him what is that a nuclear scan is done to differentiate between secondary hyperparathyroidism and para he says that in such situations what he does is he loads the patient's body with vitamin d and calcium and do, does it for two weeks and reassesses the pth if the pth suppresses it is secondary hyperparathyroidism and if it is uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is unlike it's it's li likely to remain high the calcium value is likely to remain high and is that is that what you do no. or what would you do see if you say it is what you say is fine when you find a normal calcium in a high parathyroid you can actually sometimes miss a primary hyperparathyroidism which is and which is sort of masked due to vitamin d deficiency therefore not presenting as hypercalcemia right in that situation if you find a low vitamin d it is better to supplement and recheck the calcium and pth after 6 weeks if you find that the pth is suppressing and the calcium has come back to normal that's the end of the story exactly. it's not a primary exactly yeah. but in this patient the calcium is high to begin with yeah but what is the probability of this calcium being little overestimated for some reason hmm. see What now we have gone beyond that now we are assuming that this calcium has been done properly that we cannot doubt now i mean if you doubt that you will have to repeat it or whatever but this is the final report which is now documented and proven so this is a proper hypercalcemia another question is the urinary calcium is high how long does it take for hyperparathyroidism to reach the situation where the urinary calcium excretion starts becoming high because you expect the, uh, you know with the pth value being high the urinary calcium to be in the initial stages to be low no. isn't it so no no what happens is it doesn't become low because of the hypercalcemia the urinary calcium excretion increases no uday my question no, is actually, in the initial phase of primary hyperparathyroidism Huh. you would expect the pta the urinary calcium to be low because you yes. know that is the function of pta yes agreed but if you can does it does it take for the in the natural course for the urinary calcium to start becoming high as a result of perpetual hyper uh, parathyroidism it doesn't take too much time once the serum calcium starts to build up you will immediately get a urinary calcium excretion which is high if your calcium is normal you may not get hypercalcemia because there isn't enough calcium in the blood to get filtered once the serum calcium starts increasing you will invariably find higher serum higher urinary calcium but a urinary calcium creatinine ratio is much better because for the frame of the patient you may not necessarily get a very high urinary calcium but you will definitely get a higher urinary calcium creatinine ratio that's for sure i just wanted to again have an idea about where how important it would be 
to uh, do even the serum magnesium levels or urinary calcium and phosphorus levels to conclude on the uh, not necessary you if you have a high serum calcium the only test as i said first is pt Actually, Srikant, we called patient because we thought that this calcium may be spuriously high. That time we told the patient that we will do PTH also because we were suspecting primary. So that time we repeated the calcium. We got the first second chance to repeat on his serum and then we did PTH. Yeah, I mean so that's how we come to Absolutely. Conclusion. And I, I ask this question because I think it's far more economical to repeat the PTH after giving yeah. a calcium score yes, than yes. to do a scan which is more expensive and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not very good to get, you know, go on getting neg repeated negative parathyroid scans and you lose fail. Yeah. So if you, if you have a proof, biochemical proof that it is, you know, it's biochemical uh, rise and it's secondary, then probably. So we'll move on to the second case. In the second case, the serum calcium again is on a higher side and the PTH was also done at the same time. Again, the PTH is on a higher side. Uh, so we again were thinking on similar lines that it probably prim primary hyperparathyroidism. But uh, what happened is along with primary hyperthyroidism, the clinician probably suspected that the patient might be having something further and we had asked for chromogranin in that patient. The chromogranin values also turned out to be on a higher side. So then again, yes, it, it was the two things together. And so probably we can say it is uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia in this case. Yeah, certainly. I mean, no question of it. If you diagnose hyperparathyroidism, it is mandatory. I think I, we sh I should have mentioned it also that it is mandatory that we look for MEM 1 and 2 because 1 and 2A because parathyroid will be part of that. So if you have something, especially if the clinical history suggests, we should be looking at these right. markers. No doubt about it. Yes, yes, on serum, yes. Actually, uh, Uday, you know about the case. Here, the magnesium consistently was, was very low, and amylase and lipase were consistently <laughs> very high. All these mixed pictures were confusing all the time. So ultimately, it took almost a year to come to conclusion. We have serial investigations done every 15 days. And each time we added one test. And yeah, uh, fortunately, patient the patient is also known to Uday, and he has seen. Yeah. No, no, no. 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 Yes. Regularly, yes. also, there is a marker. I'm not Intestines. very Intestine, intestinal. Intestine. Which had metastasized to the liver. Many. Men one is pancreas, pituitary, and parathyroid. So this was in the pancreas, I mean. There was, see, uh, pancreas. The no, but see, the thing is like this: that in men one, you can also have adrenal thyroid carcinoma. So men one is not only these things. You can have Cushing's, you can have adrenal disease, you can have acromegaly, you can have carcinoid syndrome. So that's more. And any possibility of explanation why magnesium was lower on? Uh, on a lower side, not, nothing specific. 